our teaching series on Sunday we are looking at a teaching series caption understanding the blessedness of a revival understanding the blessedness of what a revival do you know that nothing escapes a revival oh if I had known hey, no 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 a revival is such a time where God manifests who he is the text for our teaching series is Joel chapter 2 from verse 21 to 29 Joel chapter 2 verse 21 to 29 he said behold I will do great things and then in verse 25 he went for he said the flesh shall be full of wheat abundance supernatural abundance a revival season is not a season of lack it's a season of abundance so get ready somebody's lack shall be over today and then in verse 25 he said that we restore to you the years which the canker one the caterpillar the palm ones have eaten my great army which are set among you and you are my people shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord that god which have dealt wonderfully with them can you see that that is it's not that it's too late god will reverse time for your sake that's a revival is somebody with me uh, we said in the first service, this is very important that a revival season is a practical demonstration of the move of God, of the power of the Holy Spirit among men, and it changes men's story. Does it leave you the same way, sir? Yes, sir. Amen. It's a practical, sir. A revival is not what we are doing now, we are preaching. Amen, somebody. In a revival, as I'm preaching, heart failure is disappearing. Yeah. That is, permit me to say, a revival is when God comes into his people and begins to walk practically as if he's them. That's why I say, God has come to us in the likeness of men. That's a revival. It changes people's story. Are you hearing me, somebody? It's a practical demonstration when there is a revival you can't handle christians sir. you can't handle christians you can't handle them oh lord give us a revival eh revival you, they, they kidnap one pastor the people that kidnap the pastor will go blind that's a revival they, they lock the apostles in prison in acts of the apostle chapter 4 what happened? The angel came and opened the door. And the prison was, they left and they were still preaching. By the time they came, the prison was locked. And they checked, nobody is inside. They said, What happened? He said, Sir, we opened the prison. The, the doors were locked. Nobody is inside. They said, What happened? A revival. That is, when the power of God is practically demonstrated amongst men. Is somebody with me? <laughs> and they say, Ah. What shall we do to these men? Everything they are doing, they are, they are so... A revival period is not a, a period where you cannot tear the finger of God. You will see it visibly. Act of the Apostle chapter 4, verse, 6, of verse 16. Act 4, 16. He said, what shall we do to these men? We are talking about revival here. What shall we do to these men? For that indeed, a notable miracle has been done by them. It is seen by all. And we cannot what? I cannot deny it. That's a revival. Hey! I told you in the first service, the revival, the, I want to believe, I think that was even the last revival. I, I stand to be very corrected anyway, because we small, small boys, we are still growing. But the one I know was in the, of Archbishop of Bessie Daosa. In his time, the miracles were so vivid that you can't deny it. I remember he had a crusade here in a, a those state in Auchi. And then the next day, my young brother went to school because of the miracle. People were saying, hey, don't mind them. All those miracle people, they testify. They say that they're deaf. They're called here. They're they crippled. Now lie. They, now arrange it. They arrange them. And one Muslim boy came out from the crowd. He said, not be arrange you. He said, my brother will be Muslim. Now cripple. Iwaka. Keto. We cannot deny it. I release such power upon somebody today. Yeah. Muslim said, "Not be arrayed. Muslim is testifying. Hello, do you know that the revival that gave 
went back to the church, started in the Acts of the Apostles. In fact, the book of Acts of the Apostles is supposed to be called the book of revival. Because the story of people changed. Yes, sir. Isn't it? Yes, sir. The lame man and the beautiful girl changed. It's a book of revival. Hello, somebody. It's a book of revival. So, how do I know that we are in a revival? A revival is characterized with signs and wonders. Practical signs and wonders. Undeniable signs and wonders. Because when God is in a place, one of the ways to know is signs and wonders. Hello? We're talking about a revival here. And I said, let me repeat it. In the first, I said, a revival is characterized with fire. It's supposed to be called what? Revival fire. Tell somebody fire. fire. If you remove the fire aspect of it, it becomes fellowship. And that, in this our generation, we are remove fire. You can't remove fire. Because what better this revival was fire. Act of the Apostle chapter 2. The Bible says from verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together in one accord in the upper room. Verse 3. And suddenly there was a sound of a rushing mighty wind and filled all the place where they are. And verse 4. What happened? A clove tongue of fire rested upon all of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. It was fire that could not revive her. Mm. Fire, sir. The church of nowadays is too good. Uh, you said it. It's not me. You are with me. You will agree. Hey, tell somebody we need a revival. We need to wake up. Ephesians five fourteen said, "Awake, O thou that sleepest." Nikota Bayaga. Awake. There must be a fire. Why, why do we call it revival fire? We call it revival fire because every revival consumes people with passion for God. People are consumed with passion, with unquenchable zeal to serve God. Oh, that is why they are begging you to come for midweek. There is no revival. That's why they are begging you. If there is a revival, you will be the one carrying people to come. They won't beg you. Oh, God, give us that revival. I told you, sir, I got saved in the midst of a revival. I'm not teaching you theory. I saw revival, sir. I got saved in that time, in the early 80s. I got saved in the midst of a revival. That's why sometimes I feel very guilty as a pastor. I must tell you the truth. Because what I saw that time, I'm not seeing it now. And I need it. Passion. Sir, do you know that we were trekking to church two hours. No bus service, oh. no hand be. We will trek back and still trek again for evening to go and attend youth fellowship. Tell somebody passion. Then we will still come back. We were burning with a heart for God. Everything about God consumes us. That's a revival, sir. That's how you know that we are a revival. Amen. I was sharing with my wife how 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 revival revival is we were that we were so consumed with God that in those days once you perm your hair we begin to conduct deliverance for you. You are backslidden because we just see that the devil has entered. We 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 will pray all night. May the Lord help us. When I was not a pastor, I used to pray six hours non-stop. Now that I'm a pastor, what happened? Man of God. Justice, non-stop, just keto zeria, la, 12 midnight to 6 a.m. We're talking about a revival here. So, until we return back to that level, we won't see this revival. And that is what changes things. This one that they are killing Christians everywhere. Sir, preaching in our churches will not stop it. It's a revival that we do. When the enemy see fire, he go wrong. Make one, what they call these people, kidnappers or whatever, capture one pastor and all of them, they bring the blind to police station. That's a revival. They just 
They came to capture Elijah. Didn't you see it in the Bible? He said, Lord, smite them with blindness. And what happened? They were blind instantly. A man of God came to present to one wicked king, just as we have in some nations now. And the king said, Who asked you to accuse me that way? In first king, I think first king chapter 13. If you read from verse 3 to verse 5. And he went and took over the church. The, the king were in charge. And the, 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 the prophet came to said, God said, I should prophesy against you. This altar shall be shattered before you in pieces. He said, Who? He said, He stretched forth his hand to the prophet. He said, Arrest him. The Bible says, As he stretched forth his hand, his hand paralyzed. He couldn't withdraw it. He said, I beg, man of God, I'm sorry, pray for me. That's a revival. That's a revival. Lord, take us back there. Now let me show you what I mean. If you read the act of the apostles, it's supposed to be act of revival. Act of the apostle chapter one, Jesus stopped them again for forty days. Act of the apostle chapter two, that is the fifty day where the revival started. Are you with me? Now in that revival, what did we see? Number one, three thousand souls got saved. Act of the apostle chapter two, from verse forty one to verse forty seven. About three thousand. So a revival is a season where multitude seek God. They are just running there. What we are enjoying now, that multitude are going to church, is a revival of the eighties. Amen. Multitude. Number two, what did we see? Chapter three. The beautiful man, the, the, the man lame from his mother's womb. Put at the beautiful gate, God he true of us, a revival at the hour of prayer. Act of the apostle chapter 4, they were locked up and the, the angel opened the gate on his own accord. Chapter 5, multitude were added to the church. Multitude and an answer of prayer lie and they died before the altar. Tell somebody a revival. Tell somebody a revival. Act of the apostle said, I want to distract them. In chapter 6, they said, No. We are going to appoint Dickie. Even Dickies were performing signs and wonders, not carrying off free basket only. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> a revival. A revival is such a time that you don't need title to manifest God. Yes, don't need title. That somebody say, uh, I'm sick. He said, be healed now. And the person is healed. Why? Because the power of God is at work in every believer. It's a revival. It's a revival. That's what he said. Joy chapter 2, verse 28. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons will see vision. Your old men will dream dream. Upon the handmaid and the maid servant, I will pour out my spirit. So everyone can manifest science and wonder in a revival. Amen. Amen. May you be baptized with that spirit today. Amen. Amen. Act of the Apostle chapter 7. Hey! One of the man who was appointed deacon summarized the Bible in one chapter. Summarized creation to the, to the whole Old Testament, to Jesus, in one chapter without opening a book. His name is called Stephen. He summarized the entire Bible. They wanted to kill him like this. He said, I can see Jesus. Before he died, he knew where he was going. Tell somebody a revival. Act of the Apostle chapter 8. What did we see? Philip was disappearing here and there. Can you see a revival? It's a demonstration of signs and wonders. May you be baptized with that spirit. Yeah. I tell you, sir. I tell you. Sir, we need that revival. We need it. A revival is a situation where everybody want to belong to the church because there is power and solution in church. Today now, the point in the world, they are telling you that we are, pastors are deceiving you. No. If you come here with HIV and you go back here, they come here, they want to kill them and they return back. They won't say so. Yes, sir. We need that spirit to come down. We need that fire again. Is somebody with me, sir? Yes, sir. We need that revival again. We need it. It was so evident in the life of Archbishop Bessie in Daosa that witches could not gather in the whole nation. Can you imagine? But I did not gather in your house. 
You even, even you, you tell us. When I slept, I saw them. They sat, as if they sat in the city room. Later, they went to the kitchen. Hey, ayah. Neko kapatoa. Can I ask you a question? When you catch fire, can witches gather? No. Receive that fire now. Yeah. Because in a revival, the believer is on fire. The believer is truly set on fire. And when you are set on fire, no matter the sickness, it dies, it's burnt off. No matter the witches around you, they can't come near you. No matter the occult people, your place of war, they will be afraid of you. Receive that fire. Yeah. Abediah 18 said, The house of Jacob shall be a fire. The house of Je- Judah shall be a, f- a flame. It will burn up the house of Esau. That is a stumble. Amen. That's how it's supposed to be. Hey! Archbishop said, The witches cannot gather. I love what he said. The media people went to the, the witch doctor who said they must gather. I said, uh, so what are you saying? How do you say it to know who? You say it to who? The witch doctor said, listen to this. He said, not even God can stop them from having the meeting. And then they went back to a man who is on fire. They said, the witch doctor said, not even God can stop the meeting. He said, he's right. He said what? He's right. He said, you know why? God doesn't need to come down. I'm here. <laughs> a revival. It's a season where men take over the responsibility of God and manifest. He said, God doesn't need to come down. I'm here. God, he said to God, he said, God, do your assignment. Leave this one to me. I release such fire upon God. This is some of you now. You have changed house three times. Because why check which was your neighbor? Not again. When you see men running from Satan, it is an absence of revival. When you see believers plagued with all kinds of sickness, which is supposed to be had only in the camp of the wicked, it is the absence of revival. Because when you are on fire, HIV will be consumed. I tell you, sir, things just change. When I got saved, let me tell you the story. To know what a revival, when I say I got saved in the midst of a revival, when I got saved, the power and the move of God was so powerful in those days, that is early 80s, that some of my colleagues, some, I think that time we just enter. There was no GS1 and GS, all those things. From one, that time. From primary six, then common entrance, from one. The revival was so strong that many of my colleagues in secondary school, they were so baptized with the Holy Ghost. No, we were not born again. That was when we got born again. They were so baptized, they got saved instantly and got filled with the Holy Ghost. Instantly. They started speaking it all. Sir, they, these were the ones who will tell you if you cannot lay hands on the sick and the sick heal, you are not saved. They will tell us straight. And that's true. That's what the Bible says. They were commanding signs and wonders, sir. So powerful. Some of them, the power was too much that they left school. They, they, they couldn't contain the fire. I know, sir, I'm not telling story. I'm seeing almost many of them today. They, they left school. Some of them, they were not in school that we know. We are just farmers. Helping people to conduct ridges, do their farm. They were also filled with the Holy Ghost and started preaching. Somebody who didn't go to school will be quoting Bible without opening Bible, sir. That's a revival. I saw it practically. I know of a guy. His name is Israel. Well, I don't know his other name, but he, as soon as he got saved, he called himself Israel. Israel got saved. Israel was an arm robber. He got saved. They used to go to some of these companies and steal their material. He got saved. And the material they stole that were in his custody after salvation, he returned it to the company. He said, I was among the guy that came to steal your company. This is the remaining material. Now I'm born again. And he could not be arrested. Because right there, he started preaching to the company and healing those that were sick. Practically, sir. 
Ghost. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need the return of this fire. I prophesy to somebody right now, receive that fire. They were so anointed. Sir, so I saw it. In those days, I say, I never knew winners. Those guys will tell you I can never be sick. They were going to hospital to discharge people. I'm not telling you in South Korea, in Nigeria. I got saved in the Edo State here. So I know what I'm talking about. It was there was fire. Ah. May you receive such fire this month. Yeah. Well, let me say this. Let me say this is very important. All those revivers were buried on the altar of prayers. What do I call it? Today, churches don't pray. When was the last time you prayed one hour at a stretch apart from covenant hour? When was the last time you have a vacation, maybe public holiday? You didn't declare it for another thing. You said this public holiday is going to be a retreat. Me and God. That was what better those revivers. Every revivers is giving birth to on the altar of prayers. The Bible said they were together in one accord. They were praying when the fire fell. Are you with me, somebody? Yes, if you can't pray, you can't be revived. If you can't pray, no wonder many of us are oppressed. You are truly oppressed because you don't have fire. And this fire is generated on the mountain of prayers. Mountain of prayers. I said, I, sir, when I was not a pastor, I used to go to the bush to pray. I'm asking myself, what was I looking for? Not, I didn't have a call you. In fact, if somebody had told me that I would be a pastor, I'll tell you it's a lie because I was trying to learn scripture when they enter. Yet, I would just go to the bush and pray. I would go to an uncompleted building, carry my Bible, I would just be studying. So I'm, I'm asking myself, what was I looking for now? I can't tell. I can't tell. I'm not talking about prayer of nowadays. If they say you should pray now, the only reason why you go come prayer meeting, if I say come and be rich or have miracle alas, you go come. But if I say just come and pray to be awakened, he said, Me, eh, leave that one for prayer ban. No, sir. Everybody was a prayer ban. Can I tell you something? Until the prayer altar is revisited, Nigeria's destiny is at stake. Because the destiny of this country lies in the hand of the church, and yet the church is sleeping. What did the Bible say in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, from verse 24 to verse 28? Why men slept? So if you want to defeat the enemy, you must be awake. And the only way to be awake is by a revival. You pray. The Nigeria churches are sleeping. That's why demons in human flesh can enter a church and the gun and the gun sounded. I mean the gun. I speak the truth and I lie not. It cannot sound here. You hear me? It's not possible, sir. Because these are not human beings. These are demons in human flesh. Before they get to that door, they will meet angels in human flesh waiting for them, sir. We are talking about a revival here. It's not. There are some of the things you see social media. I talk about trash it. He said, Why? I said, Listen, you can't make me to be afraid, for I know the God that I serve. I know that my covenant with God. Is somebody with me, sir? The church is sleeping. That's why they could kidnap pastors. No! Just a declaration is enough. One declaration. One declaration. So what am I saying? Signs and wonder is the order of a revival. When our time is up, third service will continue from there. Are you hearing me, somebody? But sir, you need a revival. When that revival comes, you will no longer be oppressed. When that revival comes, Satan will not take what belongs to you. They won't give the job that belongs to you and give it to an unbeliever. No, sir. The company will close off for you. They know. So, your appearance is your fear. That's a revival. I decree. This month, before July is over, somebody shall be baptized with such fire. We need it to. So that Christians we regain back the audacity whether on the street in business at work in school wherever i am i can walk i lived in the midst of courtism whether they have a court meeting i'm always there they couldn't do me anything in school 
I was telling my wife some of their tricks and everything. He said, how did you know those things? I said, because I was living in their headquarters. That's the room of their gang leader. This is my room. I preached to him. Can I tell you something? He was the one who told all the gang, don't ever go near Brother Ben. Himself. <laughs> Sir, he said, I like this man. Sir, Sir, Neguda Shakapa. Lift up your two hands. Receive that fire now. That fire that will consume your enemy. Receive it. Not all this one now. Crocroach. Crocroach. Cockroach. Cockroach will make you to have overnight. All night. I mean, call. Cockroach. We don't pray about cockroach. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If they burn you where to eat that cockroach, you know who talk to human being again if you pass right there. <laughs> Sir, Satan understands power. That power is coming upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is a covenant of open door? I decree every closed door against you shall be open. Amen. As the Lord God liveth, you are in this service today. Every door that has been closed against your life, against your business, against your destiny, I command it open. <laughs> now, quickly, let me round up with this. A door represents a barrier or a hindrance. That is, a door is anything that denied you access to your inheritance. Amen. Amen. Anytime a door is introduced, or you see the word door, it means barrier. Don't enter. So, when you cannot take what belongs to you, it means a door is closed against you. Everybody is getting married. You are beautiful. You have money. And yet, no brother is saying, how are you? Except the wrong ones anyway. It means the door to your marital destiny is what? Close. Everybody do business and they are making it. You, you have taken loan. You are, not that you are lazy. You are hard working. Yet the money is just going down the drain. The door to business breakthrough is closed. You do work. Your money is tied down here. Head there. They, you pay the work. They are not paying you. They say, the door to your finance is closed. There is a barrier. What others get easily, you can't, you are struggling. It means for you, it is closed. It means for other people as they are coming, it's open. That is why people are doing what you are doing now. They are making it. But the moment you change to that business, losses. Okay, you change to another one, losses. You have changed, you have even borrowed money to say this one is the rainy one. Things, the door to business breakthrough is closed. But in this service, Every door that is closed against your life, I stand in the show of Bishop David Jericho. I command it open. No more closed door for you. And I said in the second service, quickly, let me say it very importantly. Every door has key, isn't it? Anywhere you see door, there must be key. If you start speaking a door in front of a door without a key, that door will never open. There must be a key, isn't it? We said very quickly, the first key we looked at for open door is you must be born again. The key of salvation. John chapter 3 verse 1 to 8. The key of what? Salvation. There are doors that will never be open as long as you are pretending to be a Christian until you are truly a Christian. You must be born again. You must be what? Number two key, the key of righteousness. Test what the righteousness what is righteousness? Living right. There are things that will never be given to you until you make up your mind to begin to live right. To do what is right. Psalms chapter 112, verses 1 to verse 3. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. The sea, his offering shall be a seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be given to him. So if you are not upright, you cannot enter wealth. The door of wealth will be closed. So live right. Tell someone to live right. 
Another key I want to talk about in this service, which is very important, is the key of knowledge. What do I call it? The key of what? My people are destroyed. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. There are things that until you know, you have understanding, you will just be groping in darkness. Psalms 82, verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk all in darkness. So you will be in darkness, mean hardship, challenges, until you seek knowledge. So go for knowledge. That's why we say read books. In your feet, go for knowledge. No better than where you are now, and doors will open. Just people don't just remain in one key. You don't know the door closed against you, so use all the keys. Go for knowledge. The key of knowledge is very powerful. Are you hearing me? It's very powerful. Because now let me talk for example now. If I buy a new car and I'm looking for a driver to drive me to Abuja presidency, and you have been praying to reach Abuja. That's your prayer. You have prayed and prayed. Because number four, prayer is a key also. And the only key where you get in a prayer. And now you didn't have the prayer for knowledge. Eh? Now this is a car. Opportunity is presented. I need somebody to drive me to Abuja. This is the key. And you say, hey, pastor, go drive you. Hey, let me drive you to Abuja because I'll be hungry to go to Abuja. I say, okay, no problem. Uh, can I give you the key? Say, yes. Where's your driving license? He said, I know, girl. Can you drive? He said, I go test. I go try. Can, hello, sir. I am anointed. Tongue talking. Will I give you the key? No. And then maybe I just anoint you. I say, in the name of Jesus, be a driver now. <laughs> That's how most of us do. We are using only the key of prayers when it require, when the door requires knowledge. Go for knowledge and the door will be open. Rise to your feet. <laughs> One good news I have for somebody is this. Your finances have been tied down. I command them release now. Yeah. Every closed door to your finances, I command them open. There are a lot of keys, keys of sacrifice, keys of prayer, keys of kingdom service, keys of love for God, keys of honor. You must know which one to use for what you are looking for. As a matter of fact, let me say this. Most times, the keys that open the door of what you are looking for is not always one. Especially in Nigeria does these days. It could get up, it could get down. Like the house I'm living in. Sometimes I get very angry with the doors. From bedroom to outside, you will open five doors, and some of those doors have two two keys. When I'm not be ah ah, who is looking for me? I was complaining the other time. My young brother said, "Ah, it's good for you. It's good for." You. I said, "Good for who?" I'm always in the hall and did it. Now that is how much some of you need keys. Two doors, two keys. The other one, two locky two times. Pakam pakam. Once is not enough. Another one, you put another hook. Kilo day. Are you hearing me now? So go and get more keys for the door of your life to be open. Is somebody with me, sir? Sick, sir. This month of July, this must change for you. As the Lord God liveth, beginning from today, before the close of today, I see door open to somebody. Why? Your pastor is a key. What he declares can open door that you cannot open. <laughs> Jesus said, I am he that open it. And no man can shut when I shut. No man can open it. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. I stand in the show of Bishop David Oyeriko. Every door to your marriage, door to your finances that is shut against you, I command those doors open. This week, you must return with your open door testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every enemy that dare to stand behind that door, I command them cried by the Holy Ghost. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, the foundational key in this kingdom, you must be born again. Isn't it? Sir, you need to sorrow. We are talking about the baptism of fire now. You can't be baptized in fire until you are born again first. 
Sir, don't pretend. Be saved. It's for your good. The devil will just mess with your life. One checkered tiny grandmother which can carry your destiny to the grave. And everything you are doing not working. All you need to destroy that devil. Be saved. Why? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. So everything can turn around and become new when you give your life to Christ. So whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. So you can be an overcomer. You can live a dominated life if you give your life to Christ. Be saved. Are you saved? You know the life you are living is not the life of a Christian. Then you are not yet born again. You need to surrender to Jesus. Jesus died on the cross to set you free. So that you can be blessed. All eyes closed. All heads bow quickly. All eyes closed. All heads bow. You want to say yes to Jesus wherever you are. With all meekness of heart. Place your right hand on your chest. All head bow. All eyes closed. Wherever you are standing, you want to say yes. Somebody you need to rededicate your life. Nobody knows you are a backslider, but you know yourself. Please rededicate your life. Place your right hand on your chest also. You want to give your life to Christ. Place your right hand on your chest where you are. Repeat this prayer after me very quickly. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. From this moment, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I repent of my sins to serve you. Because I acknowledge you died for me on the cross. You rose again the third day to justify me. Thank you for saving me today and for receiving me as your child. I'm grateful in Jesus' name. Amen.